Hey there, crafty friends. My name is Misty and welcome to Gleesman Designs. For today's video, we are going to be doing some fall and Christmas interchangeable or reversible decor so that you can use them for both fall and Christmas. Recently on my community tab, I asked you guys what you would like to see. Christmas shot up right away. Within a few days, Halloween and fall was neck and neck right there with it. With Halloween being so close, I might do another video, but let me know what you guys think of that down in the comments. So for now, let's get crafting. For this DIY, I started out with the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, also known as Jenga blocks, but all I did was take the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree, which I've said it in previous videos, and I will say it again, that super glue wood glue is amazing. So I just add a little bit of the super glue wood glue and a little bit of hot glue onto the Jenga block pieces, and then I start just gluing them together until I have seven Jenga blocks glued together. Right now I'm making the side panels to the lanterns so you could make these longer or shorter depending on how big you would like your lantern to be. But once you have seven of those glued together, you want to make four of those total. So therefore you will have four rows of seven Jenga blocks. The seven Jenga blocks glued together is for the larger lantern. For the smaller lantern, I glued five Jenga blocks together instead of seven. And again, I used the super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue to glue those together and you will do four rows of those as well. Once all the Jenga block pieces are glued together, you could leave them like this, but I personally like to use the Dollar Tree spackling to go over the Jenga block pieces just to make it all nice and smooth so that it doesn't look like it is a bunch of game pieces glued together and it really looks like a nice long side panel. Again, this is just personal preference. You could leave them exactly how they are and start painting them, but I personally like to take this extra little step just to give them that really clean finished look. Once the spackling was dry, I do take my zip sander and just sand it down just a little bit more to make sure that it is all completely smooth. Now that I have all of them sanded, I just take my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white and I paint all eight of those side pieces. So Dollar Tree has many, many, many different options on what you could use for the tops and bottoms of your lanterns. I've made so many different lanterns and I believe they were all literally everything it was from Dollar Tree. So trust me, there is so many different things. For these lanterns, I'm using these wood boxes from Dollar Tree. They do come in three different sizes and they have these cute little like metal label holders on them and I just remove them with a little screwdriver and I'm going to do that to two of the larger boxes and two of the medium sized boxes. I do not need any of the smaller boxes at all. So again, you just need two larger and two medium boxes. Then I take the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white yet again and I paint all of those boxes as well. To start assembling the lantern, I'm using the longer pieces first to build the larger lantern and I add some of that super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue again and I just glue that longer piece to the inside corner of one of the larger boxes. I repeated the same steps with the other three longer Jenga block pieces, adding the super glue wood glue as well as the hot glue and gluing it to the inside corner of the larger box. I do want to point out you want to make sure that your label holder piece that you're going to be screwing back on is facing the way that you want it to be, which is hopefully facing forward. Add some glue to the top of the top of the Jenga blocks and then you can place that second box right on top and you have this already nice lantern shape. And then I do the same exact steps yet again for the smaller lantern, which is taking now the five piece Jenga block pieces and gluing those to the inside corner and then making sure I place that smaller box right on top and gluing those pieces to those corners as well. I want to add kind of like a second layer to these lanterns. So I'm just going to use one of these square. They're really nice and chunky. It is just a decor piece from Dollar Tree. It has a beautiful saying on it, but I do have several of them. So I was okay with taking this one apart, but it does have a little bit of a stubborn burlap on it. 
if I would have maybe got it wet or even used my heat gun, it probably would have came off so much easier, but it still wasn't too much trouble. But then I did find out that there was these little tiny nail pieces that held that saying on there. So all I did was just pull those out. Now, because that burlap was on there, it did leave these little hairy pieces glued down on here. So I did just use my zip sander to sand any of that off. And once I had that nice and smooth, I painted it the same color as all of the rest of the lantern, which is the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. And you guys, I'm just going to say it now, that is the white paint that I used the entire video. So I'm just going to say white chalk paint from here on out. That larger piece is for the second layer of the larger lantern. This little small Halloween decor piece is the second layer for the smaller lantern. And it was only a dollar at Walmart, but it was marked down to 50 cents. So I did get that for 50 cents. But again, Dollar Tree has many options that you can choose from. I did not have to paint the entire piece with the white chalk paint, but I did just go in at the sides and on top so that you could not see any type of color and it all looked completely white. Now for the tippy tops of our lantern, I got the Christmas lantern around Christmas time last year, but the black lantern that is for Halloween, I did just get within the last few weeks around Halloween this year. So all I did was pop these really nice curved tops off and this part is kind of funny. I just had to leave it in there. Okay, so I got out my hot knife because they do have these little tabs to hold them onto the second larger part of the lantern. And I thought for some reason they were gonna be kind of hard to come off. So I was just like, well, we'll bust out the hot knife and it'll be super easy. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is even taking longer than probably just cutting them off with my scissors. So let's see if that'll work. And yeah, it worked so easy. So just cut off the little tabs with your scissors and do not worry about the hot knife. Once those tabs are cut off, you have the perfect tops to your lantern. And I did try and take them outside to spray paint them because they are plastic and I just hate trying to actually hand paint plastic but it did not work out because the paint I was using was more of a satin, like not matte finish at all. So I just came inside and it painted them with the white chalk paint. Then I use my favorite bamboo sticks. You guys see me use them all of the time. I literally ran out in this video and I was so sad, but I'm definitely going to be getting more very soon. I have to. They are just a staple in my craft room. I painted several of those white as well. And then I'm using that little tiny square piece that is the Halloween decor piece. And I glue one of the tops to our lanterns right on there. And look at that. I mean, that is a perfect fit. You cannot get any more perfect than that. Now the second lantern, which is the larger lantern, I wanted it to have a little bit of a different look. So I chose something a little bit more big and bulky for the second layer. And then I glued that top piece from the other lantern right on top of that nice bulky piece that we painted white. And I just love the look of these and they just are perfect tops to lanterns. And if you want the ring to stand straight up, you could just add a tiny bit of hot glue to the side and it will stand straight up. Then I take some of that Dollar Tree spackling again and I just go over any of the parts where you can see any creases. And again, you guys, this is just personal preference. Again, it is such a clean finished look. I always try and do this with my pieces because I really enjoy the finished piece. Look at how perfect that comes out. You cannot even tell that that was two different pieces. To create the X's on the sides of the lanterns, I take those bamboo sticks that I painted with a white chalk paint and I just cut them down to size, hold them up to the inside of the lantern where I would like them to be, and then I just glue them into place. You could also use dowel rods to create these X's. You do not have to have these bamboo sticks. I just personally like them because they are kind of flat instead of round. So they, they're just not as bulky and they just come in handy so very much. So whatever I did to the larger lantern, I also did to the smaller lantern. I wanted these to be a pair, but just look slightly, ever so slightly different. So again, I just 
cut those bamboo sticks down to size and then glued them inside the lantern creating the X's on both sides. Now here's why earlier I had said to make sure the holes for the label holder is faint facing the front of your lantern because I do go ahead and add these label holders back onto the lanterns and I just place them right where they were previously and just screw them right back on. You can hot glue them on if you would like, but I do think adding the screws just gives it a more finished look. I also screwed the metal label holders onto the larger lantern as well. Now to put the tops on the lantern, and I did forget to mention earlier that those plastic lanterns that I took apart for the tops are from Dollar Tree as well. I started with a larger lantern first and I added some hot glue onto the bottom of our bulky piece and then placed it right center at the top of our larger lantern. And once I had that one on, I did the same exact steps to the smaller lantern, placing hot glue on the bottom of that little Halloween piece that has our lantern top on it and placing it center on the smaller lantern. Again, because I like that nice, clean, finished look, I did add some of that Dollar Tree spackling in those cracks as well to give it a smooth finish. So while I was at Dollar Tree the other day in the Christmas section, I found these cute little wood shape angels and my first thought was they were adorable and my second thought was those would make perfect little feet or legs to home decor or whatever you would like to put on them. So I decided to pull off those little paper wings. They came off super, super easy and then I used that again white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I painted all of those little angels, which were now our little feet to our lanterns. And I did end up painting eight of those so that I could have four on each one of the lanterns. So I do add some hot glue onto the bottom and I always use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They are absolutely phenomenal. I always have them and my hot glue gun and most of the items that I use down in the description box if you guys would ever like to check them out. So once again, I just glue one of those onto each one of the corners of the bottom box and I am so in love with how these turned out. And here's the thing, I know this is mainly a fall and Christmas video, but I wanted to make these so like simple looking that they could be for any holiday or any season. You could use these all year round if you would like. I seriously think those little wood angels are absolutely perfect legs for these lanterns and they could be used in so many different ways. You could really dress these up or just add some LED candles. Do not add real candles. And let me just show you guys these Christmas ones. I love them for Christmas. And again, you could put so many different items inside of these and decorate them for every season. For this DIY, I got this house shaped beach decor item from Big Lots. It was 90% off. The original price was $14 and with the 90% off, it was only $1.40. So I absolutely had to grab it and take it home. I mainly do Dollar Tree items, but I would love to branch out and do, and do other items from other stores. Let me know what you guys think of that down below. I always want to put your guys' opinion first. So let me know what you guys think of that down below. So for this house piece, I removed the hanger, added some Dollar Tree spackling to fill in the holes from the hanger, and then I just used my thumbs to push on the corners of the house to have that backing pop out. So I wanted to get rid of this lettering here. So I just take my zip sander and I start sanding a lot of that lettering off. And as I was sanding, I realized that I could just sand a lot of the paint off in general because it was coming off actually very easy. So I just tried sanding as much as I possibly could off. 
And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to get as much of that wood grain popping out as much as I possibly could so that I could use the faux stain technique, which is just paint and water, which I made the apple barrel burnt umber paint and a little bit of black chalk paint and just mix a little bit of water with it and you just paint it on and wipe it right off. You could also paint it on and leave it if you would like it to be darker. I'm a little impatient so I went ahead and also dried it with my heat gun and I will have that also linked down below. You could also use a hair blow dryer as well. Now using my white chalk paint I wanted a nice shiplap wood look so I just start taking it and dipping my chippy brush right into that white chalk paint and I do a streaking motion and I start like kind of making larger streaks and then I turn the brush and I start blending it. And I have the brush sideways, dipping it into the paint again, and just making marks going down that board. And then I turn the brush how it's supposed to be normally, and then I start blending it. And I just keep doing that until I have it the look that I would like. Once the paint was completely dry, I designed this Christmas bucket list design in Cricut Design Space. I will have the link down below for you guys to use it as well if you would like. And I just placed it right onto the front of that wood house. And I do wish I would have put it up a little bit further. So just keep that in mind. Don't put it as low as I did. I do wish I had put it up again a little bit more closer to the top than I had did here. So I place that on and then I flip it over to start working on the other side. And I did not use the faux stain here because it was already a darker color. And I also liked the fact that it was a little bit lighter than the other side since this side is going to be the fall side. So I did the same paint technique and then I use this design from Cricut Design Space I did not design this one, but you can find this in Cricut Design Space as well. So I just place this one down on the other side of that house shape. And I love how these two sides go together, but they also look so different. For the frame of the house, I want the front side, which is the Christmas side, to be really simple and modern I guess you could say so I use my black chalk paint and I paint the entire frame except for the back of the frame so basically the front the sides and the inside of the frame I go ahead and paint with that black chalk paint the reason why I'm not painting the back of the house is because I want that to be our fall side and I wanted it to have this really pretty fall color but I did not want it to be a bright fall color and I found this Dixie Belle terracotta color so gorgeous. I just had to get it and it definitely does not disappoint. Now, as you could see at first, I thought I was going to be able to freehand that and not get any on the sides where it is black, but I was not that confident in myself. So I just took some painter's tape and placed it right over the black spots so that I did not get any of that terracotta color on the black paint and I just went around the entire house shape on the back with that terracotta color. Once I removed the tape, I absolutely loved the look of this. However, when I was painting, I did notice that there are those little nail pieces where the backing of the house was on this house piece. So I did go ahead and remove those because I knew I was going to be gluing the backing back on so I was not worried about making sure that those lined up with the holes and all of that so I just went ahead and took them right out. Once I had those little nails out I did place the house on my Cricut mat just because it was black and it wanted to pick up a lot of the sanding dust and all of that. For some reason, black chalk paint picks up any little fingerprint, but in order to add the little backing of the house, and I keep saying little, but this thing is actually humongous. In order to add the back of the house, I just used that super glue wood glue, placed it in that spot where the house goes, and then I just placed that backing right back down, making sure that the Christmas side was on the Christmas side and the fall side was on the fall side. 
Like I said previously, I want the Christmas side to be very simple, very modern. So for the fall side, I want to add a little bit more details. So I use this black cotton twine from Dollar Tree and I finally got me a little small detail hot glue gun and that I actually got at Home Depot. So it was actually very inexpensive too. And I really, really like, th like the fact that it does not put out a crap ton of hot glue like my other hot glue done gun does. So I was able to go really, really close to that crack where the house shape is. And I just added some hot glue going all the way around and added that black cotton twine going all the way around that house. And I just love how the finished look of that turns out because it really brings out the black lettering so much more. Once I had the border done, I used these beads that I found at Dollar Tree. They are white, black, and like a light purple color, and they are multi-size as well. So I just grab a few of the black ones, only two of the black ones, and then I grab four of the white ones. And I paint the four white ones with that really pretty terracotta colored paint from Dixie Belle. And once those were dry, I start taking one of the terracotta colored beads and I place it onto a piece of jute string. Then I add a black bead. And just a little tip, if you rub your glue gun, the tip of your glue gun on the end of your jute twine, wait for it to cool down at just a second and then grab it and pinch and pull up at the same time. It will make it really easy for you to string on your beads. And then I just kind of alternated the colors on the beads and pulled them down to where I could fold the jute twine over and have them hanging at different lengths. And because of timing of this video, the length of this video is very long, even though we're not doing a lot of DIYs. So I had to not put the tut tutorial for the bow in there, but it is just a finger bow. And I did use some Dollar Tree ribbon to make the finger bow. So I take the jute twine and I cut off the excess and I'm just going to fold the ribbon or the jute twine in half to make the beads hang how I would like them and then I glue them to the back of the bow and I glued the bow kind of off to the side on the house and this DIY is done. I think this DIY turned out so beautiful and I am obsessed with the size of this for only a dollar and 40 cents for that house shape. I mean, this thing is absolutely humongous. Okay, friends, I have got to know, which side do you like better, the fall side or the Christmas side with the Christmas bucket list? Let me know down in the comments. For this DIY, I will be creating the box shape with these wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of those as well as two of their palettes that they have. And I'm just going to place them just like this, but the wood pieces are a little bit longer than I need them to be. So I just use my cute little saw that I have shown you guys in previous videos. It is from Amazon and I will have the link down below in the description box. If you guys would like to check it out it is absolutely adorable and it really does work great so i just cut about a half inch off of those longer wood pieces and then they fit absolutely perfect so then i used the dollar tree super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue and i started placing those longer wood pieces right up against that inner wood piece on the inside of the palette then I did the same steps with the second wood piece on the other side of the palette. Then to add the second palette onto the other side, you just add the glue on the inner side of that wood piece and then slide it right on and you have this perfect like box shape. For the bottom, you could really use any Dollar Tree sign. Any MDF board sign will work and any foam board from Dollar Tree will work. 
all I do is just take the wood piece, place it on top, and trace it out, and then you can just cut out the bottom with an X-Acto knife. This long board from Dollar Tree, it was a long Valentine's Day sign. It fit absolutely perfect. All I had to do was just cut off the one end. Once I have it cut off, I do go ahead and sand it down just to make sure that it is nice and smooth. Then I use that super glue, wood glue again, and some hot glue, and I just place it onto the bottom of our wood piece, turn it around, and then glue it right to that bottom board so that now we have a bottom to our wood piece. Now that we have the bottom on our wood piece, I'm going to be using my bamboo sticks once again, and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, and some hot glue onto the bottom of the bamboo stick, and then I place one on the back side on either corner of the wood piece. Next, I take another one of those bamboo sticks and I just hold it up to the top of those wood pieces, make sure that I have the size that I need, cut it off, and then I'm going to use some of that wood glue and a hot glue and glue it right to the top of those bamboo sticks. And once that bamboo stick is glued up here at the top, your piece should look like this. Now I would like the roof of my little market stand to have a slope to it, so depending on how you would like your roof to be, all I did to slope the roof was cut a little bit off of the bamboo stick, and you could cut more or less depending on how sloped you would like yours to be. And then once you cut them down to size, add your glue and then glue them to the inside corners on the front of your little wood piece. And then here I go again saying little. This piece is not little as well. This is actually a very nice size decor piece. However, as I was doing this, I did notice that this back piece here was very wobbly. So I wanted to make it a little bit more sturdy. And to do that, all I did was take two more of these bamboo sticks and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue. And I glue one to the back bamboo stick on both sides so therefore it is doubling up on that bamboo stick and it is definitely making it a lot more sturdy and once i was happy with that i did go ahead and add one of the bamboo sticks to the top of those front bamboo sticks just like we did the back ones so that our roof has more to adhere onto so just cut your bamboo stick or your dowel rod down to size and glue it to the top of the bamboo sticks and now your piece should look like this Every chance I get, I use the faux stain technique because it is just absolutely amazing and so easy to do. All you have to do is add a little bit of whatever color paint I'm using, the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint, and a little bit of water, mix that together, and then I thought this was just a little bit too light, so I added a little bit of black chalk paint to it, and when it comes to black, you only need a very, very tiny bit. You do not need much black at all for any darkening on any color. So I just mix those two paint colors with some water and you have this great faux stain. And then you can take a paintbrush and paint it on. You can wipe it off if you would like or you could let it dry so that it is a little bit darker. And you can control how light and how dark it is by the amount of water or the amount of paint that you use. I use this faux stain technique whenever I possibly can because it dries so fast. There is no icky smells, it's not sticky, and it is just super, super easy to make and work with. As you can see, the faux stain works just as well as normal stain. It really brings out that wood grain. I did the faux stain on the entire piece, then I used the white chalk paint and a chippy brush to do the same paint technique that I used on the house. So all I did was add the paint onto the brush and do a streak motion with my paintbrush turned to the side. Then I turn it to the normal way that you hold a paintbrush and just go back and forth blending that in. Then I turn it to the side again, add some paint, make some streaks, and I just keep blending and doing that streaking until I have the look that I like. And I just personally feel that this technique gives the best shiplap look and it just really gives this nice, beautiful style. And I use that white chalk paint and that paint technique to paint the entire market stand. 
Once the paint was all dry, I turn it over to the back just so I can add some of this chicken wire that I got off of Amazon. It was a big roll and I will have it linked down below in the description box. This was just a piece that I had left over and it fit across the back of this absolutely perfect. To attach the chicken wire, I did use my staple gun only down here at the bottom on this wood piece where the wood piece is nice and thick and up here at the top corners where the bamboo pieces are where we glued several of the bamboo pieces together so that the staple does not go through the side. So once again, I only use the staple gun up here at the top corners on the bamboo sticks because this is where it is nice and thick. I then just used an old pair of scissors to cut off the excess chicken wire, but I do want to make it a little bit more secure on here and attach that chicken wire just a little bit better. So I take some of these bamboo sticks that I had painted white and I just cut them down to size and I start gluing them along the back side of those bamboo sticks so that I'm smashing and sandwiching that chicken wire in between the bamboo sticks. Not only is this attaching the chicken wire to the stand a lot more, it is also going to make it look a lot more finished. After I attached those three bamboo sticks, I went ahead and started working on the roof and for the roof, I'm using these galvanized metal plaques from Dollar Tree and these worked out absolutely perfect and I do want to say that they also come in a black and a copper color. I wish I would have not used my black ones already, but I went ahead and used these beautiful galvanized metal looking ones. And all I did was count down three rows and then just bend it going straight back. And I did that to both of those metal plaques. Once you have both those bent back, you can go ahead and attach them by adding some hot glue or E6000 to one of the plaques and then placing one on top of the other, making sure that the grooves line up. Also, please be careful when using hot glue, the metal can get very hot. These metal plaques actually have four holes in them, but once you glue them together, these two holes will be remaining that is visible and they are absolutely perfect where they are at, so don't try to cover them up. You will need them later on. To attach the roof, I wanted to make sure to use some really strong glues, so I used E6000 on the higher back piece and the Gorilla Glue hot glue on the front piece. Now take the roof and slide the piece that you bent back up against the piece with the chicken wire and then attach the front to the front bamboo sticks and you have the roof to your market stand. And once I had it in position, I did add some of the hot glue on the back part as well where I added the E6000 just for some extra immediate hold. And here is how it should look once you have the roof on and it is absolutely adorable just like this. But if you would like to make the interchangeable signs, I'm just taking a piece of a wood plank from Dollar Tree and I mark it down to the size that I thought that I would like the sign to be. I do cut it down a little bit more a little bit later on once I realize I made it still a little bit too big. But all I did was use that wood piece, mark it down to size, and use my box knife or utility knife to cut those pieces off. And you just score it a few times and bend it back and forth and they will snap right off. And you do not have to have one of these wood boards from Dollar Tree. This is just a board that was hanging on a piece of jute string. They do have them in several different sizes, but you could also use a foam board, another Dollar Tree sign. They also even have wood pieces that come in a pack, little wood planks. Those would be perfect for this as well. Once my sign was cut and sanded down, I used the faux stain to stain it as well. And I do make two of these because I make the tree sign as well as the pumpkins. And it is the same step, so I didn't want to repeat that. But I do want to let you guys know to make two of these signs if you do it the same way. For the first sign, once I had it all stained, I'm going to be using these stencils that I got off of Amazon. They are a Christmas stencil and the price was amazing for the size and how many stencils you get. And the detail in these stencils are so amazing. I just had to share them with you guys. Amazon did have some photos of what some of the stencils looked like as if they were done already. So I do have some of those popping up on the screen, but look how gorgeous these are, you guys. These are so perfect and they work really, really well. 
And you guys already know if I like something, I will definitely leave the link down below in the description box so that you guys can check them out and see if you like them as well. So the link for these dentals will be down below in the description box. You guys, to be honest, I would love to do a video where I use these stencils for a bunch of different DIYs. So if that is something that you would be interested in or would watch, please let me know down in the comments because that would be so much fun. Just going through these stencils gives me so many gorgeous ideas. However, for this little sign, I'm going to be using this Farm Fresh Christmas Trees stencil. Of course, I cannot fit everything on here, and actually, I did even have to move it around a little bit to get everything that I wanted to fit on here to fit, but all I did was just place the farm fresh where I wanted it, used my white chalk paint and a foam brush from Dollar Tree, and I just stippled that on, let that dry, and then I'm going to place the trees up a little bit closer towards the farm fresh than it actually is on the stencil, add some white chalk paint to that as well. And then I do the same with the Christmas trees where, well, the word Christmas trees is I just move that up and I start adding the white paint filling that stencil in. And you guys look how amazing those stencils worked out. And I really thought maybe there was going to be some bleeding because they, the price was just so great and you do get so many. And for that price, they're really big. So I was just really surprised by how well they actually worked. And here is where I do decide to kind of cut the sign down just a little bit so I didn't have that much excess on the side. Then I use my zip sander to sand the sign down quite a bit on all of the sides just to give it this more of a like rustic farmhouse distressed vibe. And here is how the Farm Fresh Christmas tree sign looks once it is finished. And for the fall sign, like I said earlier, I did the same thing to that piece of wood, stained it so that we have our sign, and then I used the fall stencils also off of Amazon. These are also so gorgeous, and there's so many DIYs that you could do with them, and again, they are for an absolute great price. Just like with the Christmas stencils, Amazon did also have a few pictures of these stencils as completed projects, so as those stencils pop up, I will have those pictures popping up as well well so that you can kind of get the feel of what they look like as a completed project. And I will have links down below in the description box for both the Christmas and the fall stencils. If you do not know how to find the description box, all you have to do is click on the title to the video and the description box should pop up. You might have to click see more in order to see links or any other details, but the title should make the description box pop right up for you. Of course, for the fall sign, I chose the Farm Fresh Pumpkins stencil, and I just stenciled that on just like I did the Christmas one. I did choose to do the pumpkin in the greenery, except instead of the pumpkin word, just because I personally liked the look of that better. I also went ahead and sanded the edges, and I love the way that these signs turned out. For the welcome banner up at the top of our market stand, I'm using this burlap banner that I had gotten at Dollar Tree. It was in the wedding section. I really like that lace looking detail on there. It is really pretty. And you also get a really long piece of jute twine with it so that you can create the banner. So you also do get quite a few of these burlap pieces. It says 12, but I swear there was way more than 12 there. I should have counted, but I didn't. But let me tell you, you get a lot for $1.25, so it is definitely worth it. To quickly make the banner, I folded those burlap pieces in half. Then I just started drawing triangle shapes that I thought would look good for a little welcome banner. And I just traced them out with my pen and then used some scissors, which were horribly dull. I definitely need to get new scissors. And I cut those triangles out. I cut out enough triangles until I could spell out the word welcome, so I cut out seven of those triangles total, and then I use these Dollar Tree sticker letters. They fit on these little banner pieces, absolutely perfect, and I just went ahead and started spelling out the word welcome, sticking those stickers right down onto those burlap pieces. Once I had the word welcome all spelled out, I cut off a piece of that jute twine that originally came with the banner set and I taped it down on my desk so that I could grab each individual 
triangle piece and add a little bit of hot glue up at the top of the banner and I start gluing them down, spelling out the word welcome. And for whatever reason, I did not use my detail glue gun here and I used my glue gun that shoots out a whole bunch of hot glue. So if you have a detail glue gun, just use that because the least amount of glue, the better. Now I attach the banner to each corner on the roof just by simply feeding the jute twine through the hole that was on that metal plaque and then you just tie it in a knot and you can have it hang as much or as little as you would like just by making the jute twine looser or tighter. Once the banner was tied on, I just cut off the excess on either side with my scissors and you have this adorable welcome banner. It does look really cute without the signs, but if you would like the signs, all you have to do is use these fastener dots from Dollar Tree. They are Velcro and two of them will stick together. They have kind of like a corresponding Velcro piece that will stick to it. And all I did was take those two pieces, stick them together. Then I take each set and I place it on the corner of one of the signs. And then I stick the sign to the market stand and the Velcro piece that is meant to stay on the stand will stay on the stand and then the piece that is meant to stay on the sign will stay on the sign. I know it's super confusing to hear like somebody say it, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing because it definitely makes it a lot easier. Now that the fastener dots that we need are on the market stand, I just take some more of the fastener dots and I stick them onto the fastener dots that already are on the market stand. And this is exactly what I did with the first sign and then I stuck it to the market stand. And the ones that needed to stay on the market stand stayed on the market stand. And again, the ones that's needed to stay on the sign stayed on the sign. So now you have Velcro on both signs and as well as on the market stand. So sorry about that, you guys. Then I add some floral foam just as a space filler. And for the fall side, I add some Spanish moss and raffia and pumpkins. And here is how this DIY turned out. Look at this, you guys. I have seen a few creators do these with the small Dollar Tree crates and they turned out so adorable. I just had to make one on a bigger scale and I love, love, love how this turned out. I would also love to know what you guys think of this DIY down in the comments. This DIY is another DIY that does not necessarily have to be just for fall and Christmas. You could, again, leave the signs out and then you could put whatever you would like for every season and every holiday. Or you could also make a sign for each season that is interchangeable and you could use that and just change out the signs as the seasons change. Now you guys know how much I love fall, but something about these Christmas trees just really get me in the cozy winter vibes. I love this DIY with the Christmas trees. All I did was add some faux snow down inside and then added the Dollar Tree Christmas trees in a bunch of different varieties and sizes. And this is absolutely gorgeous. Let me know down in the comments which DIY was your favorite from today's video. And as always, I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. I love every single one of my subscribers, but I always love to give a huge shout out to the ones that go an extra mile to help support my channel and I. So a huge thank you to Lori, Debbie, Melanie, Shauna, and Amy. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Buy Me A Coffee is just a fun, silly way that you can help support your favorite creators. And if you would like to do so, I always have a link down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching, and I truly hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!